Hello, hello, welcome back to Talk To Be Nice, this is the best podcast in the history of podcasts. Uh, it's been a while, uh, we've been busy here at the Blues, but um, we are back and we're back very strong. I'm joined by Laser. Yeah, that's me, that's me. Yeah, that's me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm here with Geordie and Jimmy Lay, the two brothers here at the Blues. We've, we've, got, we've got a few brothers here at the Blues, don't we? Yeah, we do. We do. All Roots, few, you know, we're all brothers. Lucky. We're all brothers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're all brothers. Okay, yeah, Roots, yeah, Lucky. Who else is there? Bowden is a brother. Yeah, Bodie is a brother. Yeah, yeah. Is it, I'm sure I'm sure there's a few brothers there. Talk to me nice. Talk to me nice, I pull up and I come through. Talk to me nice. Talk to me nice, I pull up and I come through. Heavy boy, heavy boys in. Um how are we feeling this morning? Yeah, I, I feel pretty good. Um got up early this morning, did a little bit of a bike, eh? Oh, get some okay. of those uh those calories done. <laughs> <laughs> but um nah, it's good, it's good. Good morning. Day looks pretty good out there, so uh, nice. yeah, it's good. How about you, Jordy? Feeling yeah, good? Yeah, uh, I've just literally rolled out of bed, so a um, <laughs> little bit, little bit tired. Oh, Needing okay. coffee. So is is this the two different personalities no, of the boys? Oh, but, oh no, yeah. no, he just wakes up <laughs> super early. He's he's you know, obviously doing a bit of work here. So yeah, fair enough. Man's here pretty early. So yeah. Nah. Speaking of you doing some work here, Jimmy. So you've uh you you've obviously had an injury last year. And it's it's forced you out of rugby for the season, so you've decided to make do with with your year off. Um, what was the process of you know deciding what you wanted to do, and then you know ending up in the office? Yeah, so obviously um, did my injury probably last year. I think it was the Highlanders game, so quite early on in the season. Um, and yeah, just obviously we had a look at the injury. Obviously tried to rehab and get back, um, and then just found out. Uh, maybe like two or three months into it, that it was a little bit worse than we initially thought. So um, had to go through the process of getting the surgery, um, and and that was a little bit niggly, or tougher to take because I'd already sort of done a little bit of work to try get back. But it is what it is. Um, so I just sort of flicked my mindset into, um, I guess, trying to use my time wisely. Um, I sat down with Pies and the the medical team, um, and we just. Pretty much just went through a plan on, on what my year would look like and, and a few things that I wanted to tick off and, and that sort of looked like um, going and doing some travel at the back end of last year, which was awesome. Um, and then, yeah, sort of filtering into this year and, and getting some uni done, doing my final semester of uni. So I'm one assignment away from getting that done. Congratulations. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. A plus, my, uh, a plus uh, average at the moment, oh, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> um, but no, nah, it's been awesome. Um, and the Blues have obviously created that opportunity for me to come in and um, be in the office, so work in the operations team. Um, it's a tough, it's a tough gig. Eh? It is a tough gig. <laughs> it's a very tough gig. It, it's sort of, it, yeah, make coffees for the team. Um, <laughs> sort of just got to earn my keep, wh- whatever way I have to do it or do it. Um, but no, nah, it's been cool seeing um, the back end of things, seeing how you guys operate. Because as a rugby player, you can get pretty, um, you know, narrow minded and and you know think it's all about you. But then you actually see the people that are actually doing the work behind the scenes, and it's quite cool. Um, to have that different outlook of being a player and being an office worker, so mm-hmm. it's quite cool. That's my year. All, all different parts to make make you know the, the boat, whole the thing flow. Forward, you know? That's it. Yeah, yeah, I like it, man. And Jordan, your your first year with the team, how, how's it been so far? You enjoyed yeah, it? I've, I've really enjoyed it. Um, mm-hmm. Just good people, you know, the staff, the players, um, even the supporters as well. Like everyone's just, uh, it's it's surreal. It's pretty cool. Um, real cool environment. Yeah, nice. Everyone's, yeah, you know, just friendly and yeah, it's cool. Um, I, I remember talking to you before the season started and, and all you said was, I, I just want a little bit of game time. Yeah. And so far you've received a lot of game time. Um, yeah. How's that? Oh, not, not a lot, but <laughs> yeah, no, enjoying like any minute that I get. Yeah. Um, the last sort of couple of years with COVID and injury and yep. things like that have, haven't really worked in my favour, but you know this year's been pretty good in terms of game time. I've had a fair few runs now, um, mainly off the bench, but um, yeah, there's, there's some great depth here and who knows, you know, we've got finals coming up and, you know, I'm just grateful to be injury free and playing playing some footy, so. Yeah, yeah and, and how's your footy going? Are you enjoying your, like, uh, do you feel like you're doing well personally or is it, you know? Are yeah, you I think just collectively we're all going well and we're all going in the right direction, so. Um, me individually, um, I think, yeah, look, I'm injury free and playing, playing, playing footy, so, yeah, and I'm enjoying it, so it's real good. Beautiful. Yeah. So, w- what's this about you two following each other everywhere? So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so he follows me. He follows yeah. me. <laughs> nah. So okay. So we, we, where do we start? We were at Kings together. Both played first fifteen. Yep. Then uh, we, we, where did you go? You off to Auckland for a little bit, or you went to Bay of Plenty? Yeah. Uh, so 
Pretty much as soon as I finished school, I sort of signed up with the Auckland Academy back yep. then. Um, and the goal was to play Auckland NPC. Yep. That was the goal. Um, I think it was NPC back then, yeah. Um, or Bunnings. Oh, I can't even remember. What, what is it now? It's Bunnings. Yeah, no, NPC. Yeah, NPC. It's, it's yeah. always NPC, yeah. but it's yeah. just yeah. another yeah. hardware. But yeah, so that was the goal. <laughs> um, it kind of took me a bit longer and never really quite cracked it in Auckland. So for me, I was studying at the time and sort of, so that was my main focus. Um, and then w when, s when that was finished, I kind of took the opportunity to go down to the bay and rugby sort of popped up there and played for the bop and then just kind of went that way. Yeah. yeah. And that yeah. kind of led me to, to the opportunity overseas. Yeah. And then how, how did you end up at the bop? And yeah, so I, I actually, I was doing pretty similar. I, every, to be fair, everything that Geordie's done, I've sort of tried to follow him. Um, oh, I, not not by choice, it's just sort of always worked out that way. Like yep. he went to uni and then I was like, oh, shit, I've got to <laughs> probably go to uni as well. Um, and then he was doing business and I was like, oh, well, he's doing business, <laughs> so I may as well go do business too. Um, and you know, when you're young, you just don't really know what you want to do. So you just throw yourself into things that you think will help. Um, and I just sort of thought, oh, business will be good. Um, at the time, I was like not really enjoying it. So having that break and then going back to it now, it's actually a new new sort of found appreciation for it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I did one year with Auckland in 2016. I was just like a on a development contract and it was awesome. I loved it. I think I played four or five games just oh, off wow. the bench as well. I think I would have been, yeah, early, early 20s. Um, and there was still the boys that are there today there. Um, and then at the end of that season, they sort of said to me, oh, well, we probably want to see you play um, club again. And I was like, yeah, that's sweet. But then the Bay came to the table and they um, gave me an opportunity to go down there for a couple of seasons. And um, I guess when you're young and you, you don't have anything else going for you, you just take the opportunity that comes. And um, it just so happened to be that Geordie was down there as well. So Are we talking him up, Geordie? Or? <laughs> no, I kind of did it all in yeah. myself. Really. Okay. Um, yeah, pretty low-key. <laughs> so, so he was already down there and I just sort of just was like, oh, it made everything easier for me. So I guess... Bottom line is whatever he's sort of done, I've sort of <laughs> followed and it's been a little bit easier for me because well, he's sure. already created the pathway. Yeah, it's <laughs> been there. And then overseas, uh, w w where did you start off in England? So I, I was initially with Edinburgh for about six months on injury cover. Um, that was an amazing experience as well. And then Jimmy at the time finished up with Auckland, was it? Or uh, finished up with the Bob. With the bop, and then yeah. I was playing uh, at Bristol. Bristol. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so I was playing at Bristol. Oh, so then it was Geordie's turn to follow. Yeah, uh, like, yeah. yeah so we kind of like, yeah, just followed each other really like. Yeah, just keep trying. Just keeps, yeah, I don't yeah, know how yeah. we do it, but somehow, yeah. And we both ended up at Bristol for a few years. Yeah. Um, how was that? So, what's Bristol like? The city like, um, and, and in terms of rugby as well. Yeah, I think it's. Well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Crazy supporters. Like I think just up in the northern hemisphere. Um, just the, the fandom's a little bit different, you know. The fans mm -hmm. are pretty. Um, you, you know, you're into your football. Yeah. Um, you follow Some a pretty trash going team. In you the you yeah. follow a trash team, but um, <laughs> you're the champions uh, of the world. <laughs> but, okay. um, <laughs> but um, but nah, you you know how the fans are. They just go wild for sports up there, so it's yep. pretty cool. Um, but yeah, in terms of the city, like it's a pretty arty place, Bristol. It's a little uni town. I think there's about five hundred thousand people there. Um, it's the home of of, of Banksy, so oh, the okay. artist, the artist Banksy. That's why you're so artistic. So you see, oh, I try to be. Uh, I don't know about that though. Um, and then, um, yeah, that's about it, really. Eh? Yeah. It, yeah, yeah, summed it up pretty well. Yeah, yeah. you guys enjoy your time up there though. Like, me, a real good place. Good yeah, people. loved it. Yeah, it's cool. Um, yeah, if you can get get get, you know what, if uh, yeah, if you can handle the cold, then it's sweet. Like, <laughs> if you can't, then it's. You guys play any snowy games? I played no, a snow I game. I, I played a snow game oh. up there. It was in the. It was actually the first year there. They were still in the championship, so okay. I was playing then. And skins on? Yeah, no, no, it wasn't skins on. It was skins Ooh. off because I got a skin head. But man, I was freezing. Yeah, I fair. was freezing, and I was on the bench too. So it was oh, like, yeah. I was like, oh man, I was just cold as. But like, literally, the wingers were like, they actually looked like they were getting hypothermia. Right? It was that bad. <laughs> like, couldn't sit. Like, we're warming up down the end of the field. And people down the other end, like, we couldn't see our team. Like, that's how, like, oh, snowy it was. Jeez. Yeah. It was snowy. I'll show you a photo later. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. Okay, so, and then from there, what was the process of deciding to come home? Uh, for both of you, actually. but And then ending up here. Yeah, I think it was just sort of the whole COVID, COVID thing. Yeah. Mm. Um, at the time, I was injured and kind of, you know, you're the first guy to sort of get struck off the, yep. off the, um, you know, the, the roster list. So, um, that just sort of eventuated and then, yeah, pretty much that, that's pretty much the main reason. Yeah. yeah, I think like 
pretty similar myself. Um, we we were yeah, I think we were sort of nearly coming into like the finals or the back end of the season, um, and then COVID hit pretty hard up there. Mm-hmm. Um, everything went into lockdown, and and um, obviously in terms of like the business side of things, like. We understand that footy is a business at the end of the day, so yep. um, we were injured at the time. I think I'd just maybe broken my leg at the time. I haven't actually been injured my whole career until I hit like 26 and then like started to compile a few, but <laughs> I'm good. We good, we good. We're on the just, way back. Just, just making up for us. We're on the way back. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was sort of like injury. I was pretty close to being back, but um, the coach at the time rang me and just said, look... Um, it just doesn't make sense right now if we can't play games. Um, yep, we can't yep. just re-sign you to continue to train when we don't know when the end game is. So, I it is what it is. I, yeah, I didn't sure. um, I didn't take it personally, anything like that. I just thought, oh well, um, let's let's get back home and and let's re- recoup and try to get the next thing going. And mm-hmm. my whole thing was coming back into Auckland. I didn't really expect any of this. I just was like, I'll get back to my club, try to play good club footy, and then hopefully something good comes of it. Yeah, and something great came with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and you just yeah, much the same, same, yeah, same very thing. Very similar again. Because were you in uh, England last year? Uh, yes, I was. So at the end of NPC last year, um, there wasn't really any opportunities going. So um, yeah, just my agent called me up and took an opportunity to go play off the Ospreys. I'd already been on loan with the Ospreys yep. while I was up in the UK, so it kind of made sense to just you know go there. And mm-hmm. at the time, I was building, so. You know, it was mm-hmm. quite an easy yes to just, you know, up, <laughs> up sticks and leave. Yeah. Um, but I did enjoy the building. It was great and kind of just showed that, you know, we're, we're quite lucky to do, be doing what we're doing. Um, you know, playing rugby is, is, is amazing. So, you know, the building definitely put things into perspective for me. Um, yeah. But, yeah, uh, to answer your question, yeah, I was up in the UK, up in, uh, for playing for the Ospreys in Swansea. Mm-hmm. And funnily enough, as soon as I got there, COVID hit. And so <laughs> I only played two games Again. there. So, yeah, so Second kind of, wave. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, so um, it's never in. So for you, are you guys Auckland boys? Yeah, so... Yeah, um, born in Samoa. Yeah, yeah. So obviously we're both... Um, probably drag on a bit here, but we were both born in Sa, um And then sort of moved around a bit. Like we moved to the shore when we first got back. Um, and then my parents just decided to move up north, um, up oh, to Kaitaia. Yeah. So we did... Better like lifestyle. Yeah, a bit of lifestyle and... Um, they just wanted to move up there. I'm not too sure. Um, <laughs> still we there? just followed them. Yeah, they're still there. They're still mm. there today. So they're they're loving it. Um, and and um, we sort of finished off our primary and intermediate there. And then our parents were pretty keen on sending us to like a, a good school in Auckland. Um, they just had that idea. They wanted us to try to get a good education. Yeah. And they chose both, a role. Yeah, 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 both both lucky <laughs> enough to get um, bursaries and scholarships to go to Kings, yeah. um, which is awesome because. My parents wouldn't have been able to <laughs> afford that. <laughs> um, and and then, yeah, we just both went through Kings. Um, and then that was pretty much our education. That's yeah. pretty We moved around. But, yeah, I definitely consider Auckland home. Spent yeah. most of our time. Like All our friends are here. Up. And, yeah, just it makes sense. Yeah, now, so so what was like? So you debuted round one last year or for the Blues. But what was that like, you know, the whole process of playing for the hometown? and Yeah, yeah, it was, um, oh, it was special, a special moment because we sort of went full circle. Like, we grew up, obviously, wanting to play for the Blues, but then, obviously, I debuted when I was, what, 27? Yeah. Um, so I did everything else except play Super Rugby, yep. um, which was kind of cool, um, going full circle and, and closing that um, little loop there. Yep. Coming back to the Blues is, or coming back coming through the Blues was, was awesome because there was already guys here that I'd played with you know, at a lower level, um, and they were all, you know, well established and, and, and really just killing it um, for the Blues. So it was cool doing that, but I think, like, the game itself, it just all happened pretty quick. I didn't really, when I when I, when I got named, I was real surprised, first oh, and foremost, yeah. yeah, because, you know, there's top quality props here, um, and, yeah, I was, I was actually shocked. I saw my name come up, I was like, oh, shit. I'm starting, <laughs> um, oh. and then and then funnily enough, um, not many people will know this, but we went and did captain's run, and um, I was doing a lift or something. I think I was lifting Bolton at the back of the line out. I lifted him, he come down, and then like just like Land bang on straight on my little toe. <laughs> my little toe was like black, but I didn't like tell anyone. Because I was like, nah, Obviously, yeah. nothing's going to take this away from <laughs> this me. <laughs> nothing's going to take this away <laughs> from me. So I hop on the plane, <laughs> go down to Wellington, and I was like, man, this is just so sore. I was like, I see my foot the whole time in the room. Um, I think Hot Dog was my roomie. Oh, I can't remember who my roomie was, but I think it was Carl or someone. 
and um, yeah, my, my toe was just black. And then I go out, go out for the game, like warming up. The ground's like hard as. I was like wearing twenty ones because I was like twenty ones. Yeah, we're playing super rugby. We need twenty ones. <laughs> um, so I run out onto the field, and like first step I take onto that um, that Hurricanes home field, mm-hmm. it was just like sore toe, <laughs> <laughs> sore toe. Get through the whole game. I'm like, man, I think my toe's like broken or something. Yep. Like, don't want to like think about it. But I played through the game. And then I finish the game, come off the field and uh, go into the medical team. I've gone, man, my toe's really sore, eh? And then, like, go see them. They're like, yeah, we probably could have, like, done something to help you there, but <laughs> you should have just told us. <laughs> I was like, okay. We have things for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. Yeah, damn. Voltarans, yeah. Voltarans. <laughs> Wait, you can Panadol, have some <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, and, and Jordy, you made your debut this year. How was that coming, you know? Coming, yeah, it was pretty, home, pretty surreal. Um, I think. Initially, I wasn't named in the team, yep. and it just sort of came through, I think, oh, one of the boys, oh, I can't remember. Maybe it was COVID. It might have been COVID. Mm. Someone might have got sick or something. COVID again. COVID, yeah, COVID again. strikes yeah. again. But it takes time, things away, and it yeah, gives it yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, gave, it, gave, it takes yeah, it. Um, yeah, so that happened, and literally got, got called um, that morning, and I think they were like, yeah, look, uh, we need you to come in and um, come do the, you know, the build-up to the game, and I was, yeah, took it with... You know, open arms and mm-hmm. enjoyed it. Yeah, it was a great time. You yeah, know, awesome, guys. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I don't know how big of a part of your life it is, but Samoa, huge for you guys in terms of rugby. How much of it is, you know, being born there? Were you guys raised in, like, a Samoan culture? or How big is Samoa for you guys? Yeah, so obviously being born there, my mum's Samoan, dad's um, Palangi Kiwi. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, on my mum's side, it's, you know... Um, Culture, the whole thing's massive. Um, growing up, we kind of almost became quite isolated from the Samoan culture. Yeah. Um, just being in New Zealand. Just, just being in, in New Zealand. Zealand and, and being in Kautai. And then moving well, in Kautai. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I think mum, you know, she, she when she's telling us off, she's speaking in Samoan and things like that. <laughs> she's so trying we, to learn English when she came back here too. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Funny enough, Samoan was our together. first. Yeah, funny enough, Samoan was our first language, but oh, over, yeah. over the years we kind of become yeah, a little more enough. plastic over the years. But it's definitely something that, that we want to. Yeah, definitely something we want to. You know, um, get back to and yep. you know, immerse ourselves within. Um, so, what was it like for you know for individually to represent Samoa, but not but then to do it together at the World Cup? Um, what was that like? I think it's just, yeah, yeah, like playing for Samoa is just special, you know, like um, it was one of those things like growing up, obviously we were both born in Samoa, um, you know, our dad obviously probably wanted us to play for New Zealand um, or try to, <laughs> um, and, and and then vice versa with mum wanting us to play for Samoa, but but I probably... Mum wins, eh? Yeah, I'd probably say my mum's mum was probably the biggest like ultimate factor in us playing for yeah. Samoa, she just like... Just a lovely lady um, wanted us to play for Samoa and just like wanted us to represent, really. So mm-hmm. I sort of felt inclined at the time to, well, this is my side to, to go and play for Samoa, and um, it, it was an awesome experience. It was obviously a massive culture shock in terms of what we're normally used to. Yeah, sure. um, going into the team, um, yeah, I, I don't think any. Yeah, it's a very unique <laughs> experience. It's something like no rugby player will ever. Like it's sort of you know they've all got their own unique experience, yeah. but playing for the Pacific Islands is just different. Yeah. It's it just hits different. different. It hits different, bro. Yeah. And that's why Bodie Barrett is born <laughs> in Samoa. I'm a genius, <laughs> yeah. but I'm just. <laughs> 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 let's just keep this going. Let's just, just keep it going. Bodie and Barrett. also, he's my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> he's the third leg. Yeah. <laughs> um, Nah, and, and, and that was just the whole thing with um with Samoa. Like we got we were lucky enough to get given the opportunity, and we we came in for like a one off camp, was it? Yeah, it was just came off for a one off camp, yeah. sort of joined the circle, yeah. and it was just we we didn't really look back from there. Yeah, awesome. It was awesome. Yeah. Um, what was the World Cup like? Yeah, it was cool. Um, let, let alone just being in Japan, yeah. I'd never really been, and so it was a pretty cool experience just to see the whole the whole city and um you know embrace the whole the whole World Cup was. Pretty mint, yeah. Yeah, no, awesome. And so, Jimmy, as a Samoan, what's it like to represent Tonga so hard <laughs> with the best foot forward for Tonga, the better island nation? Oh, there's been a few jokes going around that it's getting redirected <laughs> to Samoa. Oh, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, no. Oh. It's, it's actually been... <laughs> yeah, cut that. No, it's actually been really awesome. Um, the project itself, like, 
you know, trying to raise 20,000 20, pairs of shoes mm -hmm. for Tonga, it's actually been quite moving, um, seeing seeing the amount of buy-in that there is. The, you know, the community's helping the community, really. That's yep. how I look at it. Um, and it's it's also been a really cool piece to go alongside my uni. Like, I've had heaps to talk about when I when I have to <laughs> in my assignments and stuff. But um, it's not just me. Obviously, I've had, you know, Sarah holding my hand the whole way and also Big Sammy Pierce. Um, it may look like he does nothing on my, my on my Instagram, eh? But um, <laughs> the man is I, my I, hero. I don't think we can call Sammy <laughs> Sammy Pierce the big Sammy. Yeah, Pierce. he's when, my hero, that guy. <laughs> when, <laughs> um, when his brother exists, yeah, yeah. But he's um, no, nah, he's really helped me through it, and and it's and it's awesome. Like, man, I'd I'd do it for anyone, you know, that yeah. needs that needs something. So um, it's cool to be able to you know give back to the islands. You know, whenever I talk about it, it's it's that piece about having um, you know a great amount of Tongan players come through here, you know, there's heaps of them. Yep. Um, you know, starting with Offa, Carl, Sam Tui Tupo, you, can, you know, Anthony Tuitavaki, you heaps. know, there's heaps of them, man. So, and they all just kill it. So it's awesome that we're able to um, give back to Tonga because, you know, they've been a big part of our club, so it's only right that we give back as yep, well. For sure. um, and it's also cool that we're going offshore, you know, actually sending things to Tonga rather than, um, you know, we're usually quite confined to our region. Yep. Um, we've had people, you know, jump on board from outside our region too that are really helping us, and that's been awesome as well. Yeah, I've, I've been seeing packages come in from all over the world. Not yeah, just man. One from Belfast the other day Ooh. in uh, Ireland. Yep. So it was it was pretty awesome. Uh, I do want to say a big thank you to Buffalo and Thompson. Yes. Buffalo and Thompson have been huge, um, not only for this podcast, but, you know, in, in this Best Foot Forward movement as well. They've donated a ridiculous amount of shoes and yep. and different things. for Buffalo and Thompson. So. You guys are legends. You guys are legends. <laughs> you guys are legends, and we are coming to you very shortly to pick up the rest of those shoes. <laughs> yes. You see this bald head walking in? Um, yeah. It's we're we're getting to you. Shoes. We're getting to you. We literally yeah. did six stores the other day, and I think we pulled a thousand shoes from them. Wow. So and there's I was 80 Sammy. stores. He's about, yeah, 60 something <laughs> yeah. more. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Fun times packing that van. Yeah. But no, it's, it's, I think it's a really cool movement, and I'm, I, th I think it's. Because uh, the whole the whole point of it is to help with that second wave of relief, right? And it's and it's building Tonga back up. Yep. You know, um, so we're not we're not sending food and money and all that kind of stuff. It's how can we get Tonga back on their feet, literally? Yeah. You know, exactly. And, and it's through sport. And it's through sport, man. Like sport, sports everything. Like I guess, um, well, the people of Tonga are already good at sport. You know, they're very gifted. Like natural physically athletes. natural yep. athletes, so um, we're just giving them a few tools to be able to, you know, hopefully allow them to pursue their dreams, whether sure. it's rugby or whether it's another sport. That's cool. Yeah, just get out there and do it. Awesome. We'll end it off just with a little bit of chat about tomorrow. We have got the Waratahs. How, how are you feeling about the game, Jordy? Yeah, um, pretty pretty positive. Uh, we've got a pretty uh, young a younger team than mm -hmm. what we have played in the past weeks. Um, it should be a pretty good. Ex yeah. You know, uh, good exposure for those boys, and awesome. Um, you know, I think everyone that's selected is expected to step up and perform. And I think I think all of you have earned your stripes as well. It's not it's not like a yeah, I don't think it's a B team or anything. Not like at that. all, it's not at all. Um, everyone there's earned it. But yeah, we're, we're looking forward to it, and there's a few young guys that are you know going to get an opportunity. So yeah, yeah awesome. It's going to be a great game. Yeah, thank you very much for coming on the podcast today, fellas. It's been amazing having you both. Good chats and uh, good yarns, learning about both of your lives and. Who wins in a boxing fight? That's what I want to know. I don't know. Oh, probably I think probably, probably, probably Jordy. Reached, yeah. but <laughs> probably got the power, you know. Jordy. Well, what, I, what I do want to know is... Jordy's a year older. He's a bit more experienced. <laughs> yeah, <but laughs> He's why got why, six why toes, Why do we though? have a blues boxing fight <laughs> and the... <one? laughs> Six toes <laughs> <off> <laughs> <them>. <laughs> and the winner is extra the real grip, laser. Extra yeah. grip on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you very much for watching yeah, the like podcast <laughs> today. Uh, shout out to Barfoot and Thompson once again uh, for presenting the show. And yeah, sayonara. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, Cheers, my man. Thank you. Awesome. Cheers, brother. Appreciate yeah. it. Uh, Talk to me nice. Talk to me nice. I'll pull up and I'll come through. Talk to me nice. Talk to me nice. I'll pull up and I'll come through. Talk to me nice.